President Trump is promising a female replacement for late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. A few names already appearing as favorites for the nomination. Uh, on President Trump's list, Judges Amy Coney Barrett, Barbara Lagoa, and Allison Jones Rushing uh, 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 among the top contenders. Joining me right now is White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany. And Kaylee, it is great to see you this morning. Thank you so much for joining me once you. again. Uh, your, your reaction to the president's work on this, when do you expect we will have a, uh, a name which, of course, will, uh, will get a vote in the Senate? Yes, you'll hear from the president who his nominee is this week, certainly. Um, and there's precedent for this. Uh, it, unlike the last time around when Justice Scalia uh, passed, last time you had Republicans who were in the Senate, you had a Democrat president. Now we have a, a, an emboldened Republican majority elected in 2014, expanded the majority going to 2018. Um, so you have unified government in that sense between the Senate and the president. Uh, so the president is doing what is his constitutional obligation, and you'll hear that name shortly. But, but Kaylee, do you think that there's time? I mean, you're talking about, what, 44 days until Election Day. Will that person get the time to get the vetting, to get into, a, uh, into the Senate for a vote, and, and, and perhaps uh, get conclusion on this before the election? What's your time? We do... Yeah, we do think that there's time. Uh, we honor Justice Ginsburg legacy today um, and going forward. Uh, but she was confirmed in 42 days. There are justices that have been confirmed in shorter time than that. So there is time to do this. Um, but it means putting forward that name. And it will be a highly qualified woman. The president's confirmed that it will be a woman. And we do believe with 53 votes in the Senate that we can get this through and that Republican senators will unite uh, behind what will be a very qualified nominee. You know, you, you know that Nancy Pelosi and the president's critics are insane over this. They do not want him to name another Supreme Court justice, which, which would be his third. Uh, an incredibly consequential presidential administration this is. I mean, Nancy Pelosi, boy, is she disgraceful by even entertaining the idea of impeachment, impeaching the president for doing his constitutional duty and obligation. The two worst things that happened in Democrats were Justice Kavanaugh and impeachment. And now they want to potentially combine the two. Really bad idea from Nancy Pelosi. Uh, unsurprising, though, to hear that kind of partisan, bizarre, disgraceful game gamemanship uh, from the speaker. So the president has talked about him probably naming a woman. He said it's going to be a woman this weekend. What other qualifications is he looking for? How, uh, how specific in terms of the constitutionality is he wanting to, to name someone? Is he looking for a true constitutionist is what I'm really trying to say, Kayla. Yes, that's absolutely what he's looking for. I've spoken to him about this a few times. He wants a constitutionalist, a textualist, an originalist, uh, someone who will uh, put fidelity to the Constitution as a top priority, who will interpret the, the statutes and their plain meaning, the plain meaning of the words there, not try to reinvent the will of Congress or the words of our Constitution and our founding fathers. Uh, so he wants someone in the ilk of Justice Thomas and Justice Alito and the other great justices um, that President Trump has appointed uh, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh. Kaylee, there are questions over the TikTok deal. I know the president approved this agreement in concept, but national security threat remains a concern. This is what keeps coming up in terms of the data potentially going to the CCP. This is the first president that has really poked back on China and its bad behavior of the Communist Party. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure what you think of this deal, but you're still having a Chinese company, ByteDance, owning at least 30 percent of this TikTok global after the transaction. Doesn't that make it vulnerable for the CCP to order data being sent, sent to them? So I won't get ahead of the president and formally announcing that deal. He said we have the workings of a deal. But rest assured, Maria, that this president is putting the safety of the American people first. Uh, the Chinese Communist Party having access to the data of millions of Americans is not a tenable situation. Uh, but I'll leave it to him to announce exactly what that deal looks like.
Meanwhile, we're still deadlocked over a new release package. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle deadlocked over a package, but the president indicated last week that he could support a bigger spending pledge. This also, you know, opens the question of the next Supreme Court justice, because if you're talking about four on one side, four on the other side, Kaylee, what if we have a contested election? What about, you know, a CARES 2 package? We're not going to get any decisions here or anything that goes up to the Supreme Court if we don't have a ninth uh, judge in there. Where are we on a spending package, Kaylee? Yeah, so on the spending package, unfortunately, we're where we were last week, which is the speaker playing games on the backs of the American people. Um, she's been fundamentally unserious this entire time. Uh, she's put forward an unserious proposal, and, you know, she asked for a certain amount for school funding. We exceeded that, and then she rejected the number that exceeded her own number. It's just bizarre the way she's been trying to go about this. It's why the president took action on evictions and unemployment insurance. Uh, but Nancy Pelosi needs to come to the table. As you noted, the president said he's willing to go up in his number, uh, but Nancy Pelosi's not willing to come to the middle or to really even seriously come to the negotiating table. Well, by the way, congratulations to President Trump for being nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize thanks to his incredible work overseeing new Middle Eastern promise uh, with regard to Israel and normalized relations there. Nancy Pelosi also last week called it a distraction, Kaylee. She said, I'm glad the president has a distraction when, in fact, you've got for the first time in decades the United Arab Emirates, now Bahrain, recognizing Israel. And do you expect Oman and Kuwait to be behind and also uh, poised to do the same? Yeah, the president said there's a number of other countries uh, that he thinks will um, come on, come to this Middle East peace agreement. Um, so we'll see which countries those are. But what I will say is this. I mean, calling it a distraction, Middle East peace, I mean, that's just absolute crazy talk. When this is Middle East peace, normalization of relationships, uh, the first time in 26 years this has happened. And in the span of 29 days, the president does not just two peace deals, but a third one, economic normalization for Serbia and Kosovo. Uh, those two Nobel Peace Prize nominations were well-deserved, and we'll see which other countries um, come into the fold and, and go the way of peace. And it's all under the leadership of President Trump. All right, pretty incredible, Kaylee. Thanks very much for joining me this morning. We will keep watching all of the developments. Kaylee McEnany. Uh, thank you, Kaylee, at the White House this thank morning. Thank you, Maria.